Ah, it's you two. Yes, it has been a while. <laughs> we heard the Yashiro Commission is holding a test of courage, so we came right over to sign ourselves up. We didn't expect to see you here in person, though. Does that mean this event is really important? You think I only make an appearance for occasions that are deemed sufficiently important? <laughs> It just so happens that this Test of Courage event was actually my suggestion. But, naturally, I've left the planning and more trifling details to be arranged by my retainers. Considering that such events are quite popular across Tevat, I've had numerous examples to draw from, so everything should be in good order. I'm merely here to do a routine check on the progress of the event, that's all. Oh, Paimon gets it! So what you're saying is you're not very busy right now. In that case, maybe you can give us a quick rundown of the event rules! <laughs> Only Paimon could be so natural at ordering others around. However, the possibility remains that we may yet require your assistance. Uh, sorry, what did you say? Ah, uh, nothing. <laughs> Seeing as I apparently have some time, I suppose we may chat about the event for a moment. As its name implies, the event is a game designed to put one's courage to the test. The venue for the event will be set up in the Chinju Forest. Before the start of each round, participants will be divided into teams of two. Once teams have been formed, the event staff will announce the name of an item that has been placed in or around the Chinju Forest area. The first person to locate the specified item will be declared the winner of that round. The winner of that round? Huh. So there's gonna be multiple rounds to the Test of Courage? Precisely. There will be a total of three rounds in the Test of Courage because the event was actually orchestrated by three different parties. Merchants raised event funding, the Kamisato clan provided the grounds, and the Grand Narukami Shrine provided consulting services. As such, each of these three parties have selected one item for participants to find. So, naturally, the event will require three rounds to determine the winners. Gets it? So basically, it boils down to searching for stuff in Chinju Forest. We'll need to find one item each round for a total of three items after three rounds. Huh. Simple enough for Paimon. Yes, seems you've got the gist of it. We will be issuing different rewards based on the number of rounds won. So, if a participant wins multiple rounds, then that will also be reflected in their final reward. If a participant manages to find all three items, then they shall receive the grand prize provided by the Grand Narukami Shrine. Ooh, a grand prize? Sounds like it could be really valuable. As for its true value, I'm afraid you'll have to win the event first and ask Lady Guji yourself. Of course, this event is intended to measure your courage. If you withdraw from the event because you become too frightened, then you might as well forget about seeing any rewards. I'm curious myself how many people will be brave enough to make it to the end. It'll be most disappointing if nobody claims the prizes we've prepared. Don't worry, those prizes are as good as ours! Even though just the thought of this event sends shivers down Paimon's little spine, the Traveler will be brave enough, no doubt about that. I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how you perform. Anyway... I think I've given you sufficient details. I'll add your names to the list of participants momentarily. As for the three items you'll be searching for, please wait for a staff member to inform you at the start of the event. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. Test of Courage events tend to give rise to a variety of strange rumors and stories. So please, be sure to exercise caution. Too. Well, in that case, there's nothing to be scared of. Anyway, we got an event to win. Grand prize, here we come!
Hold it right there. Oh, well, if it isn't my compadres. Didn't expect to see you here. Huh? Paimon knows that voice. <gasps> it's Ito! What are you doing here? Oh, wait, don't tell Paimon you're here for the test of courage. Ha, <laughs> what else? I'm sorry, but uh, those prizes already belong to yours truly. Arataki ain't scared of nothing, Ito. I mean, well, uh, that's what I really want to say. <laughs> but uh, I have actually got something else going on. Oh? What's that? Ah, it's a long story. As soon as I heard about the test of courage, I got the gang together and was ready to bring everyone for the time of their lives. But, uh, it turns out the other members weren't as pumped about the event as me. Jinju Forest? We've already been there a million times. There's nothing scary about that place. That event's just a game for kids. What a waste of time. Let's play some genius invocation TCG. Seriously? Test of courage? Ugh, whatever. I guess if that's what the boss wants. Can you believe that? What a group of deadbeats. I'm not gonna put up with that. Nuh-uh, not in my gang. Oh, Paimon gets it now. Dragging the gang to an event they don't want to go to won't be the best for your reputation as a leader. Hey, this isn't about me. As leader of the Arataki gang, it's my duty to find new and tantalizing experiences for everyone. A happy gang means a happy life. Even if they can't get it through their stubborn heads now, one way or another, I'll show them how much fun a test of courage can be. Anyway, I'm no stranger to Chinju Forest. Sure, it was a little terrifying going through there, but hey, I'm used to it now. It's seriously, what kind of scary pranks could those guys in the Yashiro Commission ever come up with? If they can't scare anyone, then it's not gonna be a test of courage, now is it? Not to mention, if the gang starts complaining, I won't ever be able to show my face around here. And after all that talk, it still boils down to you. Ah, well, leading a gang can be complicated, you don't understand. Anywho, I've got a plan. Since there's no way I can trust the Yashiro Commission to make a fun event, I've decided to step in and spice things up a little. Wait, you don't seriously mean that? Oh, you bet I do. Yours truly is gonna be out scaring people. <laughs> I'm taking this event to a whole nother level. But it's gonna take more than an Oni to make it happen. So I came here to recruit some help. And then I saw you come walking along. Come on, come scare people with me, please. No way! Pretty please? Forget it! Pretty, pretty please? Ah, oh, fine. But don't forget, we're here to win the test of courage and take home the grand prize. We'll help you out, just don't get in the way of our prize! Ah, <laughs> yes! You're a real Oni saver! Hey, don't worry, with me around, winning the test of courage will be a piece of cake! Alright, those participants won't scare themselves! Let's get out there! <laughs> what a noisy guy! Hmm. But after hearing him laugh and talk, Paimon doesn't feel scared anymore. Huh. Maybe laughter is the key to making fear go away. If things get scary later, we can all start laughing at the top of our lungs. Hey, Traveler, Paimon, enough chit-chat. We're gonna miss the event. Ah, uh, coming! Here. Hey, Paimon! Ah! Oh, don't sneak up on Paimon like that! What do you want? Got ah, nothing, I just had a thought occur to me. I want to scare the gang members real good, but now that I think about it, I've never actually scared anyone before. this practice oh now there's an idea hey uh, i've 
got it. Why don't you join the test of courage like everyone else, and I'll go hide and try to scare you from time to time. Then you two can judge my scaring skills. <laughs> All right, that's the plan. Let me go get ready. Just wait. You'll see how scary this Oni can be. <laughs> and there he goes, running off and still talking to himself. Well, we were here to join the event anyway. Guess we'll just have to pass Ito's little test along with whatever else the event throws at us. Oh, seems one of the event staff is over there. Let's go talk to her. Aha! You must be here to participate in the test of courage. Yep, that's right. Uh, judging from your outfit, you must be one of the shrine maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine. That's right. Huh. I can already see a dark aura surrounding the two of you. Yes, truly ominous. If you carelessly go running into the event, all it'll take is one little misstep, and the darkness will swallow you up. <laughs> oh, what's with the sinister laugh? Is she really a shrine maiden? Sure you don't want to back out? This is your last chance. I'll count it down. Three, two, one. Welcome to the test of courage. Enter at your own risk. Sure, you could say that. You know, the most unfortunate tales always happen unexpectedly on just a normal, average day. Just like today. But no need to worry. Allay your qualms and suspicions. Everything was already set into motion the moment you two stepped into this place. Just enjoy the calm before the storm. The first round is about to begin. Have you already decided on your partner? Ah, you finally said something that Paimon can understand! Yep, the two of us will be partners. We always make the best team. Hmm? But it appears your names were written together as a single participant. The Traveler and Paimon. Which means you'll have to find yourselves another partner in order to join the event. Wait, are you serious? Ugh, if only Ito hadn't gone running off on his own, we could have had a partner. Now what should we do? As far as I know, there have been other participants who've yet to designate a partner. You could go ask around. Just be sure to make it quick. If you don't have a partner by the time the event starts, then you'll be immediately disqualified. Uh-oh. We can't let that happen. Let's go see if we can find anyone to partner up with nearby. There was a familiar scent upon the wind. I knew that I'd see you around here. Kazuha! We meet again. Courage. And why is that? Do I seem unsuited for this sort of event? Oh, no, not at all. It's just that Paimon's never seen you get scared, Kazuha. You're always so calm and collected. It's like you've never been scared by anything. You flatter me. I suppose that's only a reflection of my time wandering in the wilderness. I've heard many strange stories in my travels. I can say I've even experienced a few myself. Over time, I must have gotten used to it. Ah, that makes sense. But, uh, why do you want to join the Test of Courage? After hearing the Yashiro Commission promote the rewards for this event, I was guessing that you two would show up. Since we hadn't seen each other for some time, I figured I might as well come and see you. After all, Meeting someone after being apart for so long always lifts the spirits. Oh, so you were waiting for us? That's right. So tell me, how has your journey been lately? Things have gone pretty well. Uh, by the way, the Shrine Maiden told us that everyone needs a partner to participate in the Test of Courage event. Have you found a partner yet, Kazuha? No, not yet. Do you need me to be your partner? Very well, then. I wouldn't mind a walk together. 
I haven't participated in many of these events, so I'm curious what new experiences lie ahead. Ah, it looks like you found yourself a partner. The event is just about to start. I will now reveal the item you'll be looking for in the first round. It's called... Dongo Milk. Ooh. Dongo Milk? Correct. Tomoki was kind enough to provide us with his Dongo Milk, and it has been hidden somewhere in the Chinju Forest. The path will be marked with signs to guide you, but some strange and unusual things may occur along the way. If you ever feel you can't handle it, you may withdraw from the event at any time. Now, if you're ready, then you may begin. We don't want anyone to beat us to it. Let's go! Is it just Paimon? Or does Chinju Forest feel a little gloomier than before? I haven't sensed anything particularly different. How about I tell you a story? Once in my wandering travels, I came upon a bridge, and I had been told that an ominous presence awaited those who crossed that bridge at night. It was said that there were a pair of lovebirds who tragically fell into the water below and perished. Their grieving spirits converged around the bridge and were never dispersed. So I picked a night to cross the bridge, and as I was crossing, I heard some voices. And... and then? I stopped and listened for some time and realized it was a couple disguised as ghosts who blackmailed passers-by for their belongings. They were arguing over how to split their ill-gotten loot. The horror. The horror. Hello? Is someone there? I will haunt you, and you shall know my horror! Sounds like something horrible happened to him. Maybe we should ask if there's any way we can help. I, um... It's too late! I will haunt you! See? He doesn't need any help! Let's get out of here! What are you looking at? I'm also... Oh no, you spotted me! Shh, please, not a word of this to anyone, otherwise they'll dock my pay. You have no idea how long I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Let's go, Uji. Huh? Who's there? Weird. That short guy doesn't look very scared. Come on, Uji. Show him what you got. That's what I'm talking about. You scared now? <laughs> ah. So that's what's going on here. In this case, it might just be better to pretend to be scared. Seems we'll be the first to find it. Why do you say that? I can sense a sweet aroma on the wind. The dongo milk should be nearby. Really? Let Paimon have a look. Oh, you're right! There it is! Yippee! Who would have guessed we'd be the first ones? Hmm? But what's that scarecrow doing here? 
careful. It seems the test wasn't as scary as I'd anticipated. However, I've enjoyed the experience together with you. Now that we've found the Dongo milk, we can head back the way we came. What's the matter? Is there something over there? Ah, I see. So she is at the test of courage too. To avoid any unnecessary complications, I'd prefer not to meet with her. You may pass on my regards. There's a lot of dongo milk here. I'll take half of it back and leave the rest to you. Till we meet again. Miko told me about the Test of Courage event taking place here. I thought I would come and have a look. Ah, so that's why you're here! So what do you think of the Test of Courage? Are you having fun? It's more or less the same as I remember before. I wasn't scared by anything, but on the contrary, some of the event participants were horrified the moment they saw me. Oh, that Miko! Did she send A here to scare people on purpose? If that's the case, it feels like A isn't really experiencing the event like everyone else. Oh, Paimon has an idea. We'll give you a bottle of the dongo milk we just found. That would make you a winner in this round, too! Ah, yes. Isn't that the dessert drink we had the last time we met? Sure, I'll take one. Actually, I've sensed a familiar feeling ever since I arrived here. It's brought some old memories to mind. Huh? A familiar feeling? Have you been down to the beach by any chance? I was just strolling nearby when I noticed a space at the beach with a familiar game set up on it. I took a brief look and it appeared to be a game where you control flippers hovering in the air to strike a ball and hit some positioned elemental cubes. I saw the game was called Akitsu Yugen. I'm guessing it originated from Akitsu Hazura. The thought of that game caused me to recall some things from the past. Akitsu Hazura? What's that? It's a game where you use Hagoita to hit a ball towards a set target. It was once quite popular during festivals. Makoto also enjoyed playing Akitsu Hazura when she was alive. Yakiyako was still around at that time. And nights in Inazuma were much more lively than they are now. The yokai would hold festivals from time to time, gathering to drink, laugh, and play music. Oh, does that mean you could eat the delicious festival food whenever you liked? Yes. The yokai called their celebration the Mikawa Flower Festival. Makoto and I attended it once. She found it particularly fascinating. Sadly, the past has all but vanished. But seeing a game like that again does make me feel happy. Sounds like it could be fun! Paimon would like to play! If you're interested, you can go to the beach and give it a try. It was still being set up when I was there earlier, but I assume it should be ready soon. Yay! I shall return to Tenshukaku. Miko told me that the test of courage consists of three rounds, so please, keep up the effort and give it your best until the end. Considering you two, I think you should have no problem making it to the end. Oh, of course! <laughs> I know you can do it. Good luck. Paimon doesn't remember hearing anything about a game on the beach from Ayato. You think that? Activities also planned by the Ashiro Commission? Oh, 
The more Paimon thinks about it, the scarier it feels. Oh, this whole test of courage thing is keeping Paimon on edge. Oh. Anyway, the first round of the event should be finished by now, so let's head back. Woo! So, what'd you think? Do I know how to scare people or what? Oh! Uh... What'd Paimon think? Uh... Paimon was hiding behind you the entire time, so Paimon didn't really notice Ito scaring us at all. Uh... Paimon will leave this one to the Traveler. So, was Ito scary or not? Oh, really? Even I had no idea I possessed such talent. But this is just what I needed to hear. Now I'll show them. The gang will know just how terrifying their leader can be. Anyway, I've already figured out which path they'll be taking, so let's wait nearby and scare the pants off them. <laughs> now things are getting interesting. You ready? We've got people to scare. I think we're getting close. Come on, come on, come on. We can't let them see us. Oh, here they come. So, how are you going to scare them, Ito? Easy peasy. We'll wait for them to get real close, and then we'll jump out and shout together. They won't know what hit them. Huh? What are we, a bunch of kids now? Hey, don't underestimate me. It may sound simple, but I know exactly what'll scare them. The gang's probably moping along on their way back, saying things like, This is boring, and let's go home. But it's dark, and their guard is down. Now's our chance. Having the three of us suddenly come flying out of the bushes is gonna scare them real good. Before they come to their senses, we'll already be halfway to our next ambush spot. Shh, you hear that? Someone's coming. It must be them. All right, I'll count us in. Ready? We jump on zero. Three. Two. One. Ah! Ooga booga booga! Uh huh. Wait, you're not. Wait, hold on a second. <sighs> Did you see that? They were definitely not human. So all the strange rumors about the tests of courage are true. Oh, what should we do? Do you think the ghosts are coming after us? <laughs> oh, Paimon. I didn't expect you to be such a baby. Hey, you're one to talk. You were the first to start running. Don't make fun of Paimon. <clears throat> well, you sh you shouted ghost, so my instinct to escort you two to safety kicked in. After all, real ghosts are terrifying. My skills are completely useless against them. Oh, because I just realized that they were also running from us. Which means they were afraid of us too. And if that's the case, then there shouldn't be anything to worry about. Ha! <sighs> now that I've calmed down, I'm starting to wonder if they were actually ghosts. They might have been people dressed up as ghosts to scare us. Oh, definitely not. No, during the event, I took a little walk around the Chinju Forest and saw all the gimmicks that the Yashiro Commission had set up. Those three weren't from the Yashiro Commission, but they did seem a little familiar. Come on, let's go back there and take a look. Huh? Now you want to go back? But, but... There's still a chance that they were real spirits, right? If we go back now, they might try to eat us. Oh, it's all right, Paimon. If you're scared, you can stay here. Traveler and I will go investigate. Really? Oh, that'd be great. Oh, right. The last mystery novel Paimon bought from Yai Publishing House had a plot just like that. During the investigation, whoever said I'm not going would always be the next victim. So, uh, let's second that. Paimon's going with 
do. Don't you ever leave Paima behind! Ever! Hmm, it looked like they were running that way, but it's hard to say exactly where they went, so let's split up. But then you'll be all alone, which according to the mystery novels is super dangerous! <laughs> Don't worry about me. Once my rear's in gear, I'm not afraid of nothing. Uh, Hyman has a bad feeling about this. They scared you that bad, huh? Huh, looks like they really do have a knack for spooking people. This time, I'll capture him and learn their art for scaring people. Anyway, I'll catch you around. And there he goes, running off and talking to himself. Again. Uh, do we really have to go? Oh, fine. Let's go take a look then. But the second we see anything scary, we make a run for it. Got it? No time to lose. Well, we've already walked all the way here. Hmm. Wonder where those three went. Paimon didn't see them anywhere. Oh, maybe Ito was right. Maybe they've been hiding. Huh. Seems like they're not scary after all. Hey! Listen up, you three little wimps! Paimon can already see you guys, so just come out and show yourselves! Someone actually here! Paimon's scared again! <sighs> so this is just gonna be every Monday. Just... Don't do it, Chizuru. You can't give in to your desires. Others will suffer for it. You mustn't make the same mistake. Just hold on a little longer. You've already come all this way, right? Uh, excuse us. Did you happen to see three rascals pass by here? Uh, let Paimon tell you what they look like. Are you... talking to me? To... someone like me? Ah! You have no business coming here. You shouldn't be anywhere near me. If you value your lives, you must leave immediately! Otherwise, your souls will be trapped here forever! I won't warn you again. Now, away with you! Be gone! Wake up! Hey, Traveler, wake up! Thank goodness you're okay. Before we get to that, I think someone needs your attention first. Uh, please don't eat Paimon! Paimon doesn't taste very good! Oh, please avenge Paimon! Uh, 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 are you here to rescue Paimon? Oh, and Hazel's here too! Uh, uh, what happened to that scary person just now? Did you manage to defeat her? Scary person? Okay, I see. I only found the two of you passed out here when I arrived. There was no one else around. What happened? Tell me all the details. As I suspected, there appears to be something more behind this test of courage event. But let's get back to your original question. I haven't told you the reason I'm here. The truth is, I was commissioned to come here for an investigation. You were... commissioned? That's right. Some time ago, a peculiar game was discovered on the beach. A peculiar game on the beach? Oh, could it be the Yakitsu Yuken game that A mentioned? Ah, huh. so you've heard of it. The game quietly appeared some time ago and has since attracted some players. Apparently, it's very interesting. There was no one on the beach other than visitors and tourists when the game appeared. Imagine it like this. 
a stall suddenly appears on the street with no owner. And stranger yet, it could operate normally without anyone supervising it. People at the beach can start the game simply by talking to the bulletin board. Could it be run by ghosts? Some tourists started to say that, and the rumor began to spread, until it became a full-blown ghost story. The further that story spread, the more plausible it seemed, causing people to be unwilling to go anywhere near the beach. The Tenryo Commission wanted to close the beach in order to investigate the situation and dispel the rumors, but before they could do anything, the Yashiro Commission organized the Test of Courage event here. People that were initially scared by the rumors began to believe that the beach game was actually a preview event planned by the Yashiro Commission for the Test of Courage, so visitors have gradually returned again. But I'm quite positive that the game never had anything to do with the Yashiro Commission. Wait, so the Yashiro Commission were fully aware of all the spooky stuff going on, but they still decided to hold their event here? But Ayato must be one of the smartest guys we know! What the heck was he thinking?! Who knows? But I'd rather trust tangible evidence than speculate on his thoughts. As for my commission, apparently someone reported that they found themselves trapped for hours on the beach while playing the game. According to his own account, he kept returning to the same location no matter which way he went, and even though his friends were nearby, they couldn't see him. Oh, that sounds so scary! Even though it was obvious that he wasn't telling me the whole story, the testimonies of his friends did validate that what he said actually occurred. On top of that, it was also this very incident that led to all the ghost rumors. No one dared to go near the beach until the Yashiro Commission announced the Test of Courage. Who set up the game on the beach, and why did the Yashiro Commission help them cover it up? I need to uncover the truth, so I'm here to investigate. Anyway, don't mind me. Working together will only raise suspicion, so I'll undertake my own investigation for the time being. However, please proceed with caution. Based on my observations, most people are still unaware of anything happening here. Telling people that something's amiss might cause quite a stir. Hey, you guys finally made it. I was searching for hours, still didn't see any sign of those three, so uh, I decided to come back. How about you? Find anything? Uh, it's kinda hard to explain. Hmm, I see. So you came up empty-handed too. Well, it doesn't matter. I already came up with a new plan. Shinobu told me a saying after she got back from studying in Liyue. It went something like, uh, the something by day becomes, uh, something by night? Yeah, that's what I said. Come on, keep up. Anyway, I was so focused on scaring people last round that those three dressed up as ghosts caught me completely off guard. But not this time! Oh no, I'll be hiding nearby and waiting for those three to emerge first, and then I'll nail them with a surprise attack! You two just gotta keep playing it natural and join the contest, got it? Okay, see you later. Wait, Ito! Uh, he ran off again. Well, his plan does make some sense, at least. <sighs> Let's go talk to the Shrine Maiden so we can join the second round.
congratulations on winning the first round of the Test of Courage! Now you're one step closer to the dark, messy truth. But is that really a good thing? Ooh. Hey! Cut the nonsense! What we just saw was super terrifying! Oh, really? Good to hear. Hearing the word super terrifying is exactly what all us event organizers would like to hear. Uh, no, that's not what Paimon means. Something mysterious is also happening here, not just the event. So what? You've heard the stories about the test of courage, haven't you? Everyone who participates in the event faces a variety of emotions. People are afraid of seeing their innermost fears appear before them, and yet they still seek the thrill of experiencing those fears. So, isn't it natural for us to have things in the dark and deathly silent forest to help fulfill that experience? Just like the grinning monster standing behind you right now, waiting for you to turn around! Ah, really? <laughs> I knew a little trick like that wouldn't be enough to scare you off. So, congrats on passing this test. The second round of the Test of Courage will begin shortly. Have you found your partner yet? Huh? But don't we already have a partner from the last round? Yes, your team's outstanding efforts certainly won you the last round. So it's understandable that you'd want to pair up with your previous partner. But unfortunately, you must find a different partner for each round of the event. If you don't have a partner by the time the next round begins, then... Yeah, yeah, Paimon already knows! If we don't have a partner in time, then we'll be disqualified. Oh, let's ask around and see if there's anyone looking for a partner. Hey there! Congrats on winning the first round of the Test of Courage! Toma! Wait, were you also a contestant in the first round? I sure was, but I couldn't shake this constant feeling that someone was secretly following me the entire round. He didn't seem to be from the Yashiro Commission, and I was concerned that he might be out to stir up trouble at the event, so I tried to capture him. I didn't expect him to run so fast. I gave chase for a while, but I couldn't keep up. And before I knew it, the round was over. Hmm. Is there a chance he wasn't there to cause trouble? Maybe he was just trying to scare people. Coming all the way to the test of courage to scare people? Well, I guess the world is full of all kinds of weirdos. Anyway, I'm going to be sure to show everyone my abilities in the second round. Oh, Paima remembers you once mentioned you like Kaidon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Once I really get into it, you might find me to be your toughest competitor. <laughs> I'm only kidding, of course. I'm not here for the prizes, just to have fun. My lord has granted me a rare vacation, so I'd rather spend my time relaxing than worrying about some contest. Speaking of which, have you found a partner yet? Would you like to pair up with me? Really? Uh, thank you! <laughs> I can't guarantee we'll be able to win the second round, but I'll do my best to help. Let's give it our best shot! You appear to have found a partner. Let's see if you can repeat your luck from the first round. Though, whether winning should be considered good luck or not is debatable. <laughs> anyway, I will now reveal the item you'll be searching for in the second round of the Test of Courage. It's... A fan. A fan? You mean like the thing we use to keep cool when it's hot out? Correct. The fan was personally selected by the Yashiro Commissioner himself and has been placed somewhere in the Chinju Forest. There will be signs to guide the way, but beware. The darkness that lurks in the forest is drawing nearer. <laughs> Remember, if you can't go on any further, you can always give up and live to see another day. We'll never give up! Let's go! Hmm? Did something fall down here? 
Oh, <laughs> it's Simone Kabuto. Don't worry, this species is very docile. They're not nearly as scary as they look. If anything, they're more scared of us than we are of them. Let's leave them alone and they'll eventually climb back up into the tree. Yeah, you're right. Please, wait here for a moment. I'll go check it out. Be careful, Toma! The sound doesn't seem to be coming from the inside of the shrine. Maybe it's from behind? Huh? Oh, it's just a little cat. How did you end up here, hmm? Are you hungry? Just a second. I have some dried fish with me. Here you go. Way. Let's try another path. Mm -hmm. What's that following us? Is it a floating lavender melon? Huh? Where? Ah, you're right! That was the last thing I was expecting to see. How did they manage that, I wonder? looking for. Oh, and Paimon thought we had it, too. Uh, is it just Paimon? Or is there an eerie shadow over there? Oh, yeah. Hmm. That wasn't there when we arrived. Reminds me of a kaidan I heard. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there were four children who used to play together every day until one day, one of them mysteriously vanished. The remaining three children searched high and low for their friend, but were unable to find him. Then, one day, while the children were chatting, one of them suddenly showed a creepy smile and said, He's back. The other two were confused until they followed the child's pointing finger to the ground, only to see four shadows. Ah, it's the ghost! The ghost came back! Care to take a break and have some snacks? You're so relaxed, Toma. You act like we're just out on another hike. I brought some homemade sushi and onigiri that I prepared. Would you like some? Yes, please! Would you guys like some sushi too? Uh... Huh? Why do these statues seem to be staring at Paimon? Wait... Are these statues... supposed to be facing this way? And the candles went out. Is there something scary happening here, too? Uh, anyway, here's the sushi. Forget the sushi! Run! Good thing these lanterns are here. They sure make the path a lot brighter. You think so? Raymond thinks they look a little spooky. <laughs> I don't think there's any reason to worry. Despite what the lanterns look like, whoever placed them here probably didn't mean any harm. Believe me, there's plenty of other options if they intended to cause us harm. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Ah, <laughs> this must be the fan we're looking for. Seems we're the first to find it, too. <laughs> Our luck's not so bad after all. Oh, it has fireworks printed on it, so it must be for some sort of festival. Huh. Paimon thought Ayaka would choose a folding fan. You know, like the kind Ayaka usually uses. You're right. This fan doesn't appear to be something my lord would usually use. Anyway, let's head back now that we found it. Hmm. Wonder if Ito's still out trying to capture those three from earlier. Paimon's a little worried about him. Uh... Why don't we have a look around? Hmm? Are you planning to stay here? Then allow me to take the fan back. But remember, 
You're only one round away from taking home the grand prize. Make sure you get yourselves ready and give it your best shot. Wow, Ito, you really captured them! Seriously, why didn't you run when I told you? What are you saying? We couldn't abandon you? Yeah, that's right. So just get on with it. And if you're gonna eat us, then you'll have to deal with all three of us. We won't back down, even if... Uh, even if we're already in your stomach. Who said we were going to eat you? Wait, are you the ghost of something tasty? Uh, and Ito, why are you so quiet all of a sudden? Hmm, I have a weird feeling that I've seen these three somewhere before. Ah, oh, I know! These are all creatures from the Ultimate Yokai Field Guide that Granny used to show me! There's Yoko, Kappa, and Hitotsume Kozo! They're all Yokai! It sure took you long enough to notice. Well, we recognized you right away! You're an Oni, aren't you? According to legends, Oni are grouchy, extremely strong, and crush other Yokai into balls to eat them up! Oh, pfft, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard! Who came up with that? Besides, you're the ones people are scared of, hiding behind bushes and scaring people off the road. What are you trying to do here? Don't think I didn't see you, following him around and conjuring up all sorts of weird, scary stuff. Aha! So it was you three! No, we weren't trying to scare anyone. We were just trying to... Uh... Um... <sighs> Uh... Really? You're not... mad? Even though you scared the daylights out of Paimon a few times, it doesn't seem like you were doing it on purpose. Anyway, let's hear your side of the story and Paimon will decide whether or not to forgive you. Um... Well, the truth is, we were planning a festival. One hosted by the yokai. But humans are also welcome to attend. Mikawa Flower Festival. Huh, that does ring a bell. Oh, right, it used to be hosted by the top yokai. I heard it was supposed to be a lot of fun. I mean, not as fun as my almighty Arataki Great and Glorious Drum Along Festival, but still. Yes, the Mikawa Flower Festival is our aspiration. But we know that our festival doesn't deserve that name. The times of Yakiyako are long gone. We're just a bunch of little yokai living in the wilderness. As you can see, we lack the necessary yokai powers to put on such a grand festival. But we're determined to still reach out to humans and express our gratitude. Huh? Gratitude? What do you mean? Mm-hmm. You see, we live in the wilderness and are frequently attacked by monsters. They would come and stir up trouble on our land, forcing us to hand over our food. Sometimes, they would even get rough and leave us injured. But later, many human adventurers came into the wilderness and drove off the monsters, allowing us to live in peace. Ah, I get it now. You want to repay the favor, but, uh, your powers are too puny. Hey, don't let it get to ya. You might be a bunch of pipsqueaks, but you're all solid yokai in my book. So... Are you the ones who set up the Akitsu Yugen game on the beach? Yep, that was us. Have you tried it yet? Isn't it fun? We drew inspiration from the legendary Akitsu Hazura. It took a lot of yokai power to set it up. After that, we didn't have much yokai power left, so we set up some stalls in the forest to add to the festival atmosphere. We were just following you to see your reactions. Is the Akitsu Yugen really that important? Why did you spend all of your yokai power to build it? Paimon would have taken the Traveler for a big meal if you had set up more food stalls. Really? To be honest, we've never met a human before, so we had no idea what you would like. We focused on building the Akitsu Yugen because of a legend we heard. Ah, I know the one. It's the story of yokai meeting a human during a festival hundreds of years ago. It's said that long ago, a human samurai once stumbled across the Mikawa Flower Festival. Huh? Oh. What's a 
human doing here? We erected the barrier, didn't we? Ugh, what a pain. The yokai at the festival began discussing how to drive away the human. Huh? When suddenly, they heard a voice. Oh. Oh. Ah. This is our festival. And the point is to have fun. What difference does it make if a human joins us yokai? <laughs> the speaker appeared to be a prominent figure among the yokai. And when he spoke, the other yokai fell silent. You there, young man. Do you drink sake? Yes, I do. Ha! Ah, then join us! We can enjoy tonight's festivities together! <laughs> and so, the yokai and samurai celebrated together. The two competed in the highlight of the festival, the Akitsu Hazara. Their spectacular game ended in a draw, and a new friendship was forged. <laughs> I can't believe a human could keep up with me! Witnessing the dynamic powers of the yokai will certainly help hone my swordsmanship. You're a swordsman? Oh, yes. I'm currently traveling the world in search of formidable opponents. Then let's make a deal. We meet for a duel every ten years. What do you say? Hmm. I look forward to it. The Mikawa Flower Festival is meant to bring happiness to all who attend, and Akitsu Hazara is a symbol of friendship. That's why... When we decided to hold the festival here, setting up Akitsu Hazara was our first priority. Unfortunately, the real Akitsu Hazara has been lost to time. What we created is a version of the game we heard about from a wandering merchant, so we changed the name to Akitsu Yugen. Yeah, but that wasn't us. We have no idea what could have gone wrong. We closed Akitsu Yugen a while ago and carefully checked it for any issues. But... We didn't find anything wrong with it. Maybe it was just some strange mishap caused by our unstable yokai power at the time. Hmm... They don't look like they're lying. And believe me, I know a liar when I see one. Maybe it really was just an accident. After that incident, people stopped coming to the attraction. Later, a human man with blue hair appeared and walked around the area. He had a piercing gaze. I almost felt like he could see us. But then he turned and quickly left without saying anything. It wasn't long before large numbers of people began coming to the Chinju Forest. And visitors were playing Akitsu Yugen again. It was wonderful. A human man with blue hair? Now that you mention it, the fan that Ayato chose is the same kind that's used at a festival. Do you think that he knew about the yokai when he decided to hold the test of courage here? Oh, so my bro Ayato is here for the test of courage too? Or maybe he's here to catch Oni Kabuto! Ha! Had I known that, I would have brought the one I caught a few days ago to battle him! Wow! Ito's still clueless about who Ayato really is! Well, anyway... Seems like all the strange things we saw earlier were caused by these little yokai, not ghosts! Huh, <sighs> what a relief. And now that we know what's happening, the test of courage doesn't seem that scary after all! Hey, you want to hang out with humans, right? I totally get that. After all, we yokai are becoming a rare breed these days. If all we do is isolate, we'll only feel more lonely. So why don't you let this oni do you a favor, hmm? See, I'm a yokai too, right? And I'm already a natural in human society. I bet there's not a single person in Inazuma who hasn't heard of Arataki, the one and only Ito. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I'll show you around. Now that Paimon doesn't feel so scared anymore, maybe we can walk around the area. The yokai said they wanted to host a festival, but Paimon was too busy having the bejeebers scared out of her to pay any attention until now. Come to think of it, Paimon remembers seeing some festival-related items on the beach. Let's head over there and take a look. Maybe we can help out. Oh, it's you two again. 
I have to say I'm impressed by your willingness to approach me after last time. You're much braver than I thought. But I'm not going to let you off the hook so easily this time. If you don't leave, I'll... Hmm. Nice try, but you don't scare us anymore. We just met your fellow yokai and they told us everything. Huh? Fellow yokai? That's right. You're another little yokai who lives in the wilderness, aren't you? We just met Yoko, Kappa, and Hitotsume Kozo. So which type of yokai are you, hmm? Oh, let Paimon guess. Uh... Hmm... Actually, Paimon has no idea what you are. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're on our way to play Akitsu Yugen. Care to join us? Akitsu Yugen? Again, that game. How could this be happening now? All I needed was a little more time, and I could... Huh? What's the matter? Are you not feeling well? Oh, maybe you're hungry, or maybe you didn't sleep well. You look pretty exhausted. Don't worry, Ito has already taken your fellow yokai to meet some new friends. Everyone will get along just fine. Yeah, so there's no need to worry. Come on, let's go play a Kitsu Yugen. We'll see who can finish the game the quickest. The loser will have to grant the winner a wish. Oh, it's starting! Get ready. Amazing! You cleared all the elemental cubes so quickly! <laughs> Paimon thinks we got this in the bag! Alright, it's your turn! Okay, watch and learn! No way! She hit every cube in one shot and finished even faster than you, Traveler! Oh, Paimon's head is spinning after watching that. Did you see how she did it? Even if the rules have changed a little, I would never lose to amateurs like you. Oh, right. You're a yokai. You're the ones who created Akitsu Yugen. No wonder you're so good. Anyway, we'll keep our word. You can make a wish now. But... Before you say anything, we won't do anything that's clearly impossible or harmful to others. A wish, huh? Then I wish... ...that we never cross paths again. Wait... what? But... didn't we just have a great time together? That's precisely why. Don't ever come near me, or speak to me again. Surely that's a wish you can fulfill, right? This is my final word of warning. If I ever see your faces again, I will... I'll steal your souls! Scared now? Good! Then don't come here again! I... Uh... Paimon doesn't get it. Did we do something wrong? Oh, fair enough. But Paimon had a lot of fun playing Akitsu Yugen with her. It would be great if we could see her again. Anyway, let's go see how Ito's doing. Oh, you must be Hitatsume Kozo. Y yeah <laughs> No need to be nervous. I'm Yuimiya, and I run Naganohara Fireworks. Oh, I once saw some Naganohara Fireworks. Even though I was watching from a distance, they were still so beautiful, bursting across the sky. Really? Then the next time we meet, I'll bring some fireworks for us to launch together. It'll be fun. Whoa, really? Thank you very much. And if I may ask, are you Lord Kaedahara Kazuha? 
Yes, that's me. But I'm afraid that I'm no lord, just a wandering samurai. I've seen you with your sword in the wilderness. You made quick work of many opponents with your amazing swordsmanship. Ah, uh, that must have been when I was trying to escape Inazuma. It wasn't as impressive as you make it seem. I had to face many trying situations before I was able to leave the islands. The head of the Kamisato clan also lent me his assistance at the time. By the way, this is his sister. Oh, so y you must be the one and only Shirasagi Himegimi. What an honor. There's no need to be so formal. I never imagined I'd ever meet someone as distinguished as you. I must be dreaming. Hey, don't you want to go talk to them too? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm rather shy. Really? Well, that's strange. You seemed completely fine when we were chatting. I'm not sure why, but I feel so relaxed when talking with you, General Goro. <laughs> Actually, I'm the most timid of the three of us. I hid for days the last time someone tossed a stone into the river. <laughs> Sorry for rambling on. It's odd. I'm not normally like this. Uh, it's okay. You can't excel at everything. The important thing is to have the courage to change. Hey there. <laughs> Chatting away, I see. Mind if I join you? I've never seen a kappa before. Hello there. Thank you for bringing so many amazing people to meet us, Ito. Ah, <laughs> it's nothing. Being the one and only means being the best, you know? Oh, I should mention that uh, I even have my own gang, and every member has a special title. Classic Ito. There you go, bragging about yourself again. Don't confuse them. Everyone's here for the test of courage, not because you brought them here. Half the people here don't even know who you are. Hey, this is my moment, Paimon. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> Ito really isn't as cool as he claims to be. When it comes to having connections in Inazuma, nobody can beat Paimon and the Traveler. Oh, yeah? All right. Well, then let's have a little contest and see who knows the most people. Sure! Bring it on, Bull Checker Beetle Boy! Um, uh, please don't fight. Actually, I think you're both really amazing. And you also have a great friendship, just like Lord Kamai and the Samurai. <laughs> well, of course! Boss! Oh, it's the boys! Ah, darn it. I was so caught up with the yokai that I forgot I was supposed to scare the daylights out of the gang. Boss! <clears throat> uh, hey, fellas. Look, I can explain. I... Boss! Boss we're we're sorry. sorry! Wait, what now? We shouldn't have ever doubted you, boss. You were right. Yeah, the test of courage is terrifying. There are definitely ghosts here. I still get shivers just thinking about it, but the thrill was kind of fun. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I told you it would be an exhilarating experience, but no, none of you believed me. Anyway, no need to be too scared now. Let me tell you what's happening here. It turns out there aren't any ghosts here. All the scary stuff you saw was just a little misunderstanding we had with the yokai. Right? Ah, uh, sorry, but I've never seen these three before. I'm not sure where you've been or what you've seen, but I don't think it had anything to do with us. Huh? Huh? Wait, hold on, little Yoko. You're kidding, right? Wait, you know, now's not really the time for that. N no, I'm serious. I really don't know what's going on. But if it wasn't you guys, 
Does that mean there are real ghosts out here? Oh, that's right. Paimon assumed she was a yokai too. And we even played a Kitsuyukin with her. Uh, I, I'm not sure who it was you met. But we're the only three yokai who wanted to hold a festival here. Calm down. Everyone, j just calm down now. What's all the noise about? Oh, you're the Tenryo Commission's... Hazel! There's nothing to fear. Even if there really is a ghost, only your noise would drive it away. Ito, you and your gang should go and inform the other contestants about the situation. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Oh, okay. Whew. Paimon somehow feels a little better now that Hazo's here. Uh, hello? Miss Shy Maiden? Uh, huh. Strange. She isn't here. What's this? Look, there's something written in red on the bulletin board! Round three, item, Hagoita. Does this mean that the item we have to find in the third round is a Hagoita? The Shrine Maiden appears to be urging us to finish the third round of the Test of Courage. But, where did she go? <gasps> Has she been taken away by a ghost? Will Paimon be next? Paimon will never leave your side now! The words are scribbled hastily, but there's no evidence of a struggle. However, aren't there too many words written here? I believe that the three items chosen for this three-round contest were each selected by the three organizing parties. The Dongo Milk was chosen by the merchant who funded the event, and the fan was chosen by the Yashiro Commission, which provided the staff. So, does the Hagoita, which should have been chosen by the Grand Narukami Shrine, have any unique significance? Let's worry about that later. The bigger question is, are we really going to join the third round of the Test of Courage? Paimon would love to win the grand prize, but our safety comes first! How about we... make a tactical retreat? I still have my commission to complete, so I'll stay. Fear arises from mystery, and it's a detective's job to unearth the truth from the mystery. <sighs> Paimon somehow feels a little better after hearing you say that. Okay then, let's wait for a while. Maybe the Shrine Maiden had something to take care of and we'll be back soon! Traveler, Paimon, please let me be your partner for the final round of the Test of Courage. I'd like your assistance with this investigation, since you two are the only ones who have seen the alleged ghost. That's fine with Paimon. What do you think, Traveler? I have a few theories, but we don't have enough leads yet. There are some places I'd like to investigate first, so you two can accompany me. Sure. Where would you like to start? I want to go back to where we first met up. According to your accounts, you encountered the ghost there and passed out. I believe there may still be some clues there. Uh, do we really have to go there? What if we're walking into a trap? Are you worried that she'll be waiting for us? If anything, that would make things easier. My worry is that we won't be able to find her. Honestly, it'd save me a lot of trouble if she were to show up on her own. Wow, Hazel! You're fearless! The more cases you see, the less afraid you become. Let's go.
This should be approximately where you first encountered the ghost. Of course, we cannot conclude whether the woman is actually a ghost or not at this point. But I'd like to go over everything that happened again. Do you recall anything she said at the time? Hmm. Let Paimon think. She warned us not to go near her. And she said if we didn't leave, our souls would become trapped here. Ooh, Paimon doesn't want to remember that moment. Paimon's shivering just thinking about it. And then what happened? Then, everything seemed to get darker, and Paimon started to feel dizzy. There were ghostly flames flickering all around, and... Paimon saw some sort of black mist surrounding the ghost, and then Paimon passed out. Hmm. Based on your account, it does really seem like you've seen a ghost. Exactly! So are you convinced it was a ghost now? It's possible, but I'm more interested in what she's actually trying to achieve than what she is. Even if she is a ghost, as long as she possesses some sense of reason, then there must be some purpose behind her actions. Wasn't she after our souls? She said that herself. I think she was just trying to scare you. Oh, you think so? Think about it. If I had the ability to take your souls, then why go to the trouble of warning you over and over again? Besides, a ghost wouldn't have allowed you to walk away knowing about the secret of its powers. Hmm, that does make sense. Huh, why didn't Paimon think of that? I believe there are only two possibilities. The first is that she wanted to reap your souls, but there was some condition that had to be met. You know, like what we usually call a curse. But if you had really been cursed, then you would probably have noticed it by now. So, this is the less likely scenario. I believe she was just trying to scare you away. But why would she want to scare us away? Hmm. Oh, Paimon knows! Maybe she was trying to get us to quit so she could claim the Test of Courage prizes! Oh! Hmm. Probably not. So why does she want to scare us? Do you have any ideas, Hazel? Based solely on your account, I don't believe she actually meant any harm. She just didn't want you to stay here. But this evidence alone is insufficient to make any valid assumptions. She could very well be guarding some treasure or covering up a crime. Though, my intuition is telling me that neither of these hypotheses are correct. Let's continue investigating the surrounding area. found any leads yet? Yeah, some tree branches seem like they were bent by something, but that's about it. I see. After you left, I took a good look around the area. Aside from the bent branches, there are burn marks in some places, but that doesn't really tell us much. If only there was some more conclusive evidence. Excuse me. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's you guys! What are you all doing here? We heard you were out searching for clues, and we wanted to help. Oh, that's really brave of you. Uh, actually, we're also really unsure about what's happening here. We just asked the members of Mr. Ito's gang about what happened to them, and it sounded really scary. That lady is either a nasty evil spirit, or formidable yokai. Either way, it's not good. B -b but we still want to hold the Mikawa Flower Festival. Uh-huh. We long admired the friendship between Lord Kamai and the samurai. 
Which is why we want to hold the Mikawa Flower Festival, to return the favor we once received from the humans. Even though our powers are limited, we don't want this bond of friendship to vanish. The Mikawa Flower Festival is meant to be enjoyable for everyone. The Chinju Forest covers a large area, so it'd be great to have more help in the investigation. Welcome to the team. Let's all do our best to figure out what's going on. Don't worry, we're very familiar with the area. We won't miss any clues. This is a piece of shade cloth. Shade cloth? Yeah, it can effectively block out light and is used in a variety of settings, including stage performances. There's a rough tear in the cloth, probably caused by a sharp stone, or maybe some branches. Branches? Suppose that a large shade cloth was originally hung from a tree, bending the branches. When the shade cloth was removed from the tree, perhaps one of the corners caught and the branches ripped it, causing a small piece of black cloth to fall into the river. Either she didn't care, or she was in too great a hurry. Perhaps she had other things to handle at the time. But why would she hang shade cloth in the trees? I'm only speculating, but... Maybe she used it to create the atmosphere you experienced. Let's not worry about that for now. There are still many variables I haven't deduced yet. Next, I'd like to investigate the place where the Arataki gang encountered her. Do you know how to get there? Oh, I know the way! I asked the gang members where their encounter with the ghost happened when we were chatting earlier. I'll take you there. Good. Please lead the way. Let's go find out what's going on. This is the place. They claimed that as they passed through here, the area suddenly grew dark, and some ghostly flames appeared out of nowhere. Huh. What a coincidence. We saw the very same thing! Let's start by taking a look around the area, just as we did before. I found some sort of smashed ball under the tree. The inside of it looks like it was blackened by smoke, and it smells like fireworks. Touching from the burn marks left on the scene, the ghostly flames you saw were not created by yokai power. Rather, they appear to have been caused by something flammable. I'm not sure what, though. There's some strange powder in the cracks of these stones. I picked some up and sniffed it to see what it is, and it made me really dizzy. Ugh. I'm so tired now. Hmm. Similar scare tactics. And she didn't have the time to completely hide the traces. I believe we're closing in on the truth now. I'm almost certain that the woman you encountered was not a ghost. She possesses no extraordinary powers. She was merely scaring people with some small props she had set up ahead of time. Some small props? But can you really do all that with just some props? What we saw was absolutely terrifying. First and foremost, the test of courage contributed to the unsettling atmosphere here. You were initially frightened by your first encounter with these three yokai, and then shortly after, you ran into the mysterious woman. It was natural for you to be on edge. Because you were already tensed up, you were breathing more rapidly and inhaled a lot of sleeping powder that she had sprinkled around the area. 
That is what caused you to feel dizzy. That's when she pulled down the shade cloth and lit those so-called ghostly flames, creating a terrifying scene. Hm, that's the most likely explanation anyway. So, it was all just a show? Uh, she tricked us! There is, however, still one loose end. The person who commissioned my investigation did become stranded on the beach as a result of some unusual power. That couldn't have been accomplished by just a few small props. But if she possesses such powers, why bother with the theatrics? Oh, Paimon can't wrap her head around all this. Hmm. She can only use props to scare people in the forest, but she can use strange powers on the beach. Huh, I see. I think I've figured it out. Whoa, that was fast. If we rule out the potential of organized crime, then only one possibility remains. I know who the woman is. Let's go to the beach. We'll come along too. No, you should go back and tell the others not to be afraid and not waste their time searching the forest. The truth has surfaced. It's time to put an end to all the unnecessary panic and await the outcome of the test of courage. Okay, but please be careful. If you run into any danger, simply call out our names. We'll be able to hear you. There shouldn't be any danger now, but thank you anyway. Let's go. Let's search along the cliffs, huh? If I'm not mistaken, there should be a chunk of earth that's unlike the others. Come find me here. There she is. Paimon thought you were a yokai like the others, but they said they'd never seen you before. So, who are you? And why did you try to scare us? <sighs> I have already warned you never to speak to me. If you don't leave now, then... It sure doesn't seem like she's using any props this time! Don't move. Just trust me. Your yokai power won't scare us. It will only hasten your demise. Yokai power? Huh? How did you know? You're a yokai that emerged from an object and assumed a human form outside of your own body. When this type of yokai is close to its own body, it can use some yokai power, but that ability weakens as it moves further away. And if the original body is destroyed, then the yokai that originated from it will likewise perish. Should I refer to you as a Hogoita spirit or Tsukumogami? Don't bother. You may call me Hanyuda Chizuru. That is the name I go by now. Chizuru? Why do you want us to leave? If you're a yokai, you should understand why the other yokai want to interact with humans. Besides, we had a great time playing Akitsu Yugen together, didn't we? Just like the story of Kamai and the Samurai. Yes. That's why. That's why I don't want you to be sad too. Sad? What do you mean? I'm sure the yokai have already told you of the story about Kamai befriending the samurai. But they don't actually know the entire story. The samurai was about 25 years old when they met at the festival. They met again ten years later, and remained friends. They spent time together drinking, traveling, and sparring. When they had first met, they merely respected each other, but ten years later, they became best friends. 
After another decade, the samurai had reached the pinnacle of his swordsmanship and won their duel by a narrow margin. Kamai was so astonished by his defeat, he gave up drinking and began training to become stronger for their next duel. However, another ten years later, Kamai did not meet the samurai. As it turned out, war had broken out in the south, and the samurai had gone to defend the border. Kamai was unconcerned, because ten years was nothing in a yokai's lifetime. But when they met once again, Kamai discovered that the samurai was already 65 years old. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the samurai's gray hair and scars covering his body. Hey, old friend. Can you still wield the sword? <sighs> I'm getting too old to fight. <sighs> this time, I've come to say goodbye. I see. Then, how about one last game of Akitsu Hazara? <sighs> All right. The samurai gave his best effort during the game, but had to quit halfway through because he was too weak. After putting down his agoita, Kamai remained silent for a long time before letting out a long sigh. <sighs> what a shame. Their friendship started as something they looked forward to, and in just a few decades it turned into regret. Lord Kamai's appearance hadn't changed, but his dear friend in front of him had grown old. The joys of friendship gradually gave way to the pain of regret. People often say that those outside the situation can see things more clearly. And I learned a harsh truth after witnessing all of it. Everything that people come to regret is inevitably set in motion from the beginning. We yokai are different from humans. We have longer lifespans and different natures, but we share the same world. We interact with one another. We are drawn to one another and will eventually part ways. When the dream ends, all that is left are sorrowful memories and lingering pain. Even a wise and seasoned yokai like Kamai felt sadness when it was time to say goodbye. Imagine what a pure and kind little yokai would feel. Oh. So, you mean... I was hiding on this beach, waiting for the last of my days. But those three yokai came and set up the Akitsu Yugen here, which woke me from my slumber. I didn't want them to approach humans with unbridled optimism and enthusiasm just because they'd heard the legend of Kamai and the Samurai. That would simply be repeating the same mistake. Is that why you pretended to be a ghost? To scare all the people away from here? Oh, so you must be the one who trapped that guy on the beach. That was a little bit harsh, don't you think? My power has become pretty weak now. And most of the time I just use some props I've collected to scare people. I can't show myself when there are a lot of people around. But that jerk was greedy. He wanted to steal the decorations from Akitsu Yugen and sell them for a profit. That's why I used my yokai power. To teach him a lesson. Ah, so that's what happened. You have a strong sense of justice. By the way, how did you know the rest of the story about Kamai and the Samurai? <sighs> it's okay if you don't want to tell us. I've already figured it out. Your true form is this pair of Hagoita, isn't it? Hagoita? Oh, wait! So that means she's... The pair of Hagoita used by Kamai and the human samurai to play Akitsu Hazura hundreds of years ago. You gradually developed sentience after being influenced by great yokai power. You were the closest to witness their story. 
Even with the Yokai power's blessing, the Hagoita have started to rot away after hundreds of years. You can't sustain yourself, so you were forced to rely on props to scare people. And if my theory is correct, this pair of Hagoita is also the item we need to find for the third round of the Test of Courage. Excellent work. You figured it all out. Congratulations, little ones. You've passed the third round of the Test of Courage. Nico And... the Shrine Maiden? Paimon thought you went missing! I apologize for causing you concern. It was actually Lady Yai's idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think? Were you scared? Because fear is induced by uncertainty, the more chaotic the situation, the better. Having the event staff also mysteriously vanish only added to the uncertainty. I must say, I think this test of courage truly lived up to its name. So you're the one responsible for all the scary stuff. Hitomi, go tell the others that the test of courage has ended and that we have a winner. Now that I've solved the mystery, I'm going back to meet with my client. The intent to steal is not exactly a serious crime, but it can't go unpunished. I'll see you two later. Nico, did you choose the Hagoita for the third round of the Test of Courage because you already knew about Chizuru? Nico, Lady Yai, you're... I followed Kitsune Saigu around the Mikawa Flower Festival one year, and saw her play Akitsu Hazura. That was when I saw you. You didn't have a human form at the time, and possessed only the earliest traces of sentience. I remember now. You were on Kitsune Saigu's shoulder. I went for a stroll on the beach some time ago and sensed a familiar yokai power. Though your power was weak, I was still able to find you. You were sitting in a tree, gazing at the tourists below. I overheard you telling yourself that you must be patient and avoid contact with humans. Huh? When was that? I didn't notice you at all. With your powers being so diminished, it was only natural that you didn't notice me. You must have been blaming yourself all this time. You knew Kamai and the samurai became friends as a result of Akitsu Hazura, a game connected to your existence. At the time, I couldn't take on a human form like this. I had only a hazy sense of the outer world. After they first met at the Mikawa Flower Festival, I felt proud to know that I had left a mark on their story. But after they said their final goodbyes, I could often hear Kamai sighing to himself. I couldn't help but hide, because I blamed myself. When I woke up again, the world had changed. Lady Yai, you are a well-known yokai. You must know many more things than I do. So I have a question for you. People meet, become friends, and then go their separate ways. After such a short time, they leave only regret and sadness in their wake. Is it really worthwhile for us yokai to interact with humans? Why not? Tell me, how did you feel when you played Akitsu Yugen with the Traveler? I... felt happy, but... Hmm, but your rationality told you that it was wrong, didn't it? It turns out that there is still another piece to the story of Kamai and the Samurai that you are missing. What do you mean? The Samurai and Kamai never met again. True, but the story doesn't end there. That Samurai's name was Yanagibashi Takuto, who also happens to be the founder of the Soran Ishin art. It is believed that Takuto developed this style of swordsmanship while dueling with Kamai, who had also befriended the third-generation heir of the Soran Ishin art, Tominaga Masanari. Five hundred years ago, Kamai and Tominaga fought side by side until their final moments. 
and the sword Tominaga wielded was passed down from Yanagibashi, the regret Kamai once felt had finally been resolved. Oh, I never knew. We yokai are not like humans. Humans have too short a lifespan, and the day will inevitably come when we must say goodbye. However, the bond formed by friendship will not be broken, but rather carried on in a new form. There's no reason to be upset by this. Time flies by in an instant, and life passes by like a dream. So, you must be happy in the present. You should understand what I mean now. Hey, compadres! Ito, what are you doing here? <laughs> Hitomi told me everything. And I also heard that you won the last round. I even know who the ghost lady is now. Anyway, I had a little discussion with the others, and, uh... Hey, you're that fox lady. Why are you here? <laughs> Please just disregard my presence. Now, tell us what you discussed. Ah, right. <clears throat> Alright, listen up. To celebrate the end of the Test of Courage event, we will be holding the Mikawa Flower Festival! I gave it some real thought and realized that it might be kind of difficult for those little yokai to hold the festival on their own. But with my help, it won't be a problem! That's right, Arataki, the one and only Ito, will be in charge of organizing the best Mikawa Flower Festival anyone's ever seen! Hooray for Ito! Oh. Uh, can we really trust this guy with the festival? Hey, what you trying to say? Besides, it won't just be me. Other people will help too. Even my bro Ayato is gonna be there. Everyone's busy getting ready and the festival will be up and running in no time. It won't be long until you can all join the fun. <laughs> You're the best, Ito! And what would a festival be without me? I'll be sure to go have a look, too. Ah, it has been some time since I've attended a festival. Fortunately, I brought sake with me. Paimon's gotta admit, Ito does have his moments. A festival, delicious food, count Paimon in! Uh... All right, I'll join. If you don't mind, that is. Ito! And Goro! What are you two talking about? Oh, I was just saying that if I had more time, I'd have built a massive fishing pond here. Fishing? You know, when I lived on Watatsumi Island, I used to just dive into the sea and catch fish with my bare hands. <laughs> Take it from an expert, using your hands to catch fish is nowhere near as fun as using a fishing rod. Just the other day, I caught a fish so big that I didn't even know how to handle it. I even wrote a letter to Yai Publishing House about it. That's an unusual problem to have. Huh? A big fish? How come you didn't tell us? Paimon could have helped you eat it! Huh? You wrote a letter to Yai Publishing House? Oh, you bet I did! I wrote to the That's Life column and asked Miss Hina for advice. Ah, she's so amazing. She got back to me really quickly, too. Huh, what a coincidence. I do some part-time work there, and I recently received a similar letter. You mean the letter was about dealing with a giant fish they caught? No. Could it be? Could it be that there's someone as good at fishing as I am? Oh, not on my watch. Hey, you all go enjoy the festival. I'm gonna get out there and catch an even bigger fish. Just you wait. I'll be inviting you all to my fish feast. <laughs> Oh, 
Aww, the string snapped. I was so close. Yoimiya, this is more difficult than it looks. Can you really fish out these water balloons with a string? Don't worry, let me show you a little trick. Just remember that your hand has to be quick. Yo, yo, Tsuri! I haven't seen this game in some light novels before! Do you want to give it a shot? Close one eye, aim carefully, and fish it out quickly. Oh, it looks kind of tricky. Paimon will let the traveler try. You have to catch at least three water balloons since there's three of us. Uh, but Yoimiya, if I close one eye, I won't be able to see anything. Feels like it's been ages since the last time I had some. Hmm? You mean you don't get to eat ramen very often, Ayaka? But it's so delicious! Oh, it's you. We'll need two more bowls of ramen, please. Food like ramen and hot pot tend to have a lot of oil and salt, so I don't get to eat them very often. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, now Paimon totally gets why Ayaka would put cake in the hot pot. Huh? Oh, uh, please, no need to bring that up again. Phew, I'm stuffed and feeling a little sleepy. <sighs> I'm just gonna take a nap. By the way, were there any special stalls at yokai festivals in the past? Yes, but, well, it's a long story. Paimon can't believe you couldn't get a single water balloon. You've gotten rusty. Chizuru managed to finally get one and gave it to Hitotsume Kozo. He looked like he really wanted it. But Paimon wanted one, too. All right, then I'll catch one for you next time. Yay! Come on now, this is way more expensive than usual. Even if it is a festival, you shouldn't hike up the prices this much. Hey now, it costs money to run a stall. I need to raise my prices to help cover the expenses, you know? Uh, fair enough. How about five masks for 30% off? Final offer. All right, all right. Uh, it's so hot. Feels like I'm being roasted here. Don't get too close. It's better to keep a few steps back. I know. It's just so rare to see such a nice bonfire. I want to get as close as I can to enjoy it. There are many beautiful things in the world. There's no need to be anxious. The festival has only just begun. I was surprised that you didn't even tell your sister. It seems she was quite frightened, too. It would have been uninteresting had I told her what was going to happen ahead of time. Besides, with her friends by her side, she wouldn't ever be too scared. Having a little fright is good to release any tension she might have accumulated lately. <laughs> Everything went according to plan. People started to panic as soon as they sensed that they had no idea what was happening. Ah, oh, how amusing. <laughs> yes, well done. Hey, you two, stop laughing! It was scary! Hmm? Have you finished exploring the festival? Well then, are you having a good time? Yeah, it's great! The original Mikawa Flower Festival was much more lively. But even if you could attend the original, you probably wouldn't be as happy as you are now. Because it's always more fun to enjoy a festival with friends, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Well then, I'm guessing you have something you want to say to him alone? We'll leave you in peace. 
What did you want to say to us? Ah, you saw through me again. I can't help but feel you somehow know everything. It's not that I know everything. It's just that I've been in your position before. <sighs> Traveler, do you have a moment? I'd like to talk to you. Alone on the beach. All right, here will do. Thank you for agreeing to come with me. Actually, I was delighted when I first discovered that I could take on a human form. I was a yokai derived from a pair of Hagoita who came into being in the middle of a festival. So naturally, I enjoyed the lively festival atmosphere. I wanted to go to more festivals become friends with humans, and play Akitsu Yugen with them. But every evening, as night began to set in, I'd recall the bitter smile of the old samurai as he set down the Hagoita, and the lonely Kamai sighing as he drank his sake. Then I would wonder, if I became friends with a human, would that person experience the same melancholy in the future? As a result, I was convinced that I couldn't do it. I told myself I would not repeat that same mistake. I'm sorry that I spoke so strangely when we first met. I'm sure it must have scared you. I expected you to flee in terror. But when we met again, you acted like you had no trouble being around me. I knew you mistook me as one of the yokai. But instead of telling you the truth, I went and played Akitsu Yugen with you. Hmm. I'm not completely sure myself. Perhaps it's because I've always wanted to be like Kamai and play Akitsu Yugen with humans. Or perhaps it was because I knew I didn't have much time left and I didn't want to be alone. Anyway. Thank you for taking the time to play with me. When we played Akitsu Yugen, Paimon said the loser would have to grant the winner a wish. At the time, I wished for us to never cross paths again. However, you still came and found me. Meaning, you never granted my wish. So, can I make another wish? Let me think. I wish for you to remember me. Uh, no. I only have one wish, so I better make it count. Okay. Listen carefully. My wish is... I wish that every day of your journey ahead will be filled with joy like a festival. 